My name is Alex Rodriguez reminding you, you don't need a contra, you need a team of pros. What's up guys? Did you feel it? Did you feel it? Did you feel that earthquake? We had an earthquake guys. Today we're talking earthquakes. I uh, want to talk to you a little bit about what you can do to minimize your exposure to earthquakes and what you can do. So stay tuned, don't go anywhere. Let's get started with the show. This is our weekly construction show. My name is Alex with Bay Cities Construction. Don't go anywhere, we're gonna start the show. What's going on guys? Welcome back, welcome to the show. If you haven't watched our show, please don't forget to subscribe and like us share it with your friends every week we come to you with a new topic a new construction related topic uh, my name is alex rodriguez this is bay cities construction and the bay cities construction show and today we are talking about earthquakes you know it's been a solid year um it's going to be a year actually since the fourth of uh, fourth of july weekend earthquake um, and i'm here in i live in redondo beach our offices are in torrance and we felt it pretty good so we're going to talk a little bit about earthquakes, what you can do to uh, get your house ready and avoid some, some big expensive repairs. And I'm also going to uh, share with you some pictures that we took of the earthquake uh, over at Ridgecrest. Um, my team and I went out there and we took some really cool footage and we're going to share with you what we found. Um, and it definitely helped us uh, be better at what we do meaning uh, how do we set up a house, how do we bolt down a house, a building, and prevent earthquake damage from occurring. So stay tuned, don't go anywhere. Uh, let's, get, let's get into the show right now. If you didn't catch the last episode, we talked about earthquakes too, but if you live down here in the South Bay, it, whether it's uh, Redondo Beach, Manhattan Beach, Hermosa, even South Torrance, you definitely know what a tall and skinny is. A tall and skinny house is definitely a house that is can potentially have a, a lot of earthquake damage if we have a strong earthquake. So last week's episode is that if you didn't, if you haven't seen it, you can catch it on the replay. We have it up on Facebook and on YouTube. Um, it's episode 40, Tall and Skinny Homes of the South Bay. It's almost like, uh, I'm not gonna go there. It sounds like a housewife show. Anyway, all right. So let's talk about a, a, a little bit of the, of what goes into a bolt down, a brace. Is this a live link? This video. Oh, okay, cool. This video here is our, our team members under the house uh, bolting it down. So if you want to get a little bit more granular, a little deeper into you know what it actually takes to get your house bolted down, this video is really cool. You can uh, follow the link below. We're going to post that in the description, and you can take a look at that a little bit later. Don't don't go anywhere yet. Just stay here. We're going to... We're going to talk about this, uh, this bolt down theme. So we're going to talk about the, the obviously the earthquake. We had a 3.7. Um, we're going to talk about our Trona and Ridgecrest visit. We have some really cool pictures of houses that were really damaged. And we're also going to talk about what you can do to prevent your damage and or minimize the damage. We're not, we can't make your house earthquake proof, but we can definitely improve your house's performance during an earthquake. All right, so let's get into it. 3.7 magnitude look i'm not dr lucy jones here okay but i uh, just kind of want to give you a little bit of an overview of what you know what's an earthquake how it, it it affects your building and um for many of you you may not realize how many earthquake faults are around us they're everywhere they're all around us so this earthquake that happened uh, this week happened at midnight uh, it was a 3.7 and it was over like near um, like like Dara Heights, kind of a just north of Inglewood. And in here, you could see like the heat map. This is a, a screenshot of the the heat map. Uh, the areas affected. So you see, we're we're down here in Torrance. Our offices are in Torrance, and it was felt it was felt all the way down to Long Beach. And it was some people felt it in the valley. We uh, we we saw some reports of, of folks feeling it in the. I think it's far north as even like Santa Clarita or something like that, right? It was well, Lancaster. Lancaster, yeah, that, and that's pretty far from the epicenter. So it was a shallow earthquake. It wasn't. It wasn't that deep. It was about seven, seven miles. And this is the uh, the little seismograph uh, graphic, and um, 
it's a it's actually kind of like I guess this is like the P wave the the primary wave. It was a short, but it was a, it was it was a powerful earthquake. You know, this is a little screenshot of something posted over in Channel Four. Uh, so Windsor Hills, Ladera Heights neighborhood. Uh, that's kind of the the location that it, that uh, it generated in, and then this is kind of like another not so much a heat map, but kind of a geographic map of the the strongest areas affected, and it came from the Newport Inglewood, in, excuse me, the Newport Inglewood fault fault zone, and I, we've actually got a really cool graphic here of the fault line. So that's the fault line. It goes all the way from Orange County through um, all the way to Culver City. I believe the most of the most of the action was on the northern part here of the fault. So the communities affected were Signal Hill, Long Beach, Culver City, Compton, uh, Huntington Beach. I have to tell you, I'll be honest with you, I, I slept through it, but uh, it was one of those days for me. I was, I was pretty beat. My, my wife definitely woke up and she was like a little bit, a little bit, uh, a little bit startled from it. And uh, I know a lot of people here at the office, uh, we talked about it, they felt it pretty good. So, you know, it was definitely one of those things that uh, it was a strong, it was kind of a strong jolt. This is a, a picture from the 1933 earthquake that damaged uh, the John Muir uh, School in, in Long Beach. You can see this is a, uh, thank God we don't build buildings like this anymore, but this is all a brick building. And these brick buildings, they really don't do good in earthquakes. It was, it's been, it's a bad construction for earthquake country. So I guess uh, back then it was the deadliest earthquake to date, uh, about 120 fatalities. That's not good. And this is kind of a really cool graphic of the fault lines, and I, I, I guess the 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 way that the I don't know exactly what you call this, but like the, the I mean it's the fault zone, but the, the way that the ground is actually cracked and and how it moves, and apparently there's like helium that is seeping up through the through the rock in that section mm -hmm. but these are all the, the, the kind of the different layer layers of rock and then this is the pv fault so see there's you can have multiple fault lines in multiple directions and um it's really interesting when we when we start talking about the ridgecrest earthquake those two fault lines uh intersect intersect with each other um, and those that series of earthquakes occurred July fourth and fifth, and you know obviously there was a series of earthquakes that that followed up on that. But the the kind of the the preamble the preamble was the fourth of July, and then the the actual earthquake was the fifth of July. What do you want to do? Go to the slideshow one more. So yeah. So it's it's actually pretty significant because um, UCSB uh, geologists said that that leaking helium-3 is significant because it shows that that fall goes down all the way to the mantle. So it's oh, pretty deep. Wow. So so it's pretty deep so fall. meaning that that also the, the earthquakes the earthquakes uh, strength is can can be it's substantial, right? Yeah. So, you know, it's it's my understanding that when an earthquake is shallow, um, you you have it feels a lot stronger. Then you can, in other words, you can have a higher magnitude earthquake that's deeper in the soil, and it, it could it could be buffered by the amount of material between where it broke deep in the soil all the way to the to to the surface. So, the fact that this uh, this earthquake is uh, the, this fault is actually so deep it it um it's not a good thing, and they're, it's all around us and they're they're running parallel to each other in a few different sections. And I believe it's a thrust type fault. That's right. This is a thrust fault. Crazy. So this is a a, kind of a map of the Ridgecrest area. We were out there last year, probably like what three or four days after the earthquake hit. And the reason we went out there was we wanted I wanted to learn more about how houses or buildings were damaged. Because for those of you that, that if you haven't been following my channel, uh, not only do we do houses, uh, house bolt downs, but I also do soft story retrofits, which are bigger apartment buildings. And um, I, just, I really just wanted to learn in the field uh, how these buildings react and how they, how they break so that 
when we're repairing them, we can do a better job for our customers. So this is kind of a little, little data, couple data points that Brian put together here. Uh, this is actually kind of a cool little video um, taken by a security camera in front of this guy's house. So let's uh, let's take take a quick look at uh, like why is it doing that? Why didn't it didn't play? Ah, sorry guys. Let's see if we can. So um, just kind of sorry, I'm skipping through this ad thing. So here, check it out. I'm gonna go back on to to the. So here, here's a very interesting thing. You see how it's going um, back and forth, and then it starts to oscillate. It actually changes direction. Yeah, that was a cat that uh, kind of scattered around. And see, it's still going. It's it's actually going for quite quite some time. Every cat in the neighborhood is completely freaked out. <laughs> let me uh, let me just kind of back it up real quick. Um, this is actually a really long earthquake. Northridge was like 15 seconds. This this actually goes on for it's almost a minute, I think. So you see how the the way that the car moves, it's it's changing direction, and it, that's that kind of oscillating movement eventually. Um, when when the the earthquake is kind of progressing, and it, it's still shaking, like the car's still going and going and going. Things were rocking. This is the, the inside of somebody's house. It's kind of crazy. So It's funny. It's always the ceiling fans that start moving first. And then it's just like, it's on. No wall clocks and stuff. It's kind of crazy. It seems like the lights went on. There, this, this is kind of an interesting, an interesting thing. The pools, they, they, uh, they really kind of illustrate like the, the violent movement of the ground it's just kind of shoving that water most people don't realize this but in a in a very large seismic event um, it's projected that the the ground waves will actually move up 18 to 24 inches so this is a very mild obviously this is a very mild earthquake compared to that something like that but you could see how that surface um, surface pool is moving so let's keep going here. Hey, if you guys have questions and stuff while we're doing the show, please go ahead and post them, and uh, Brian's gonna read them, read them for me. One of our viewers, Juan Morales, says he definitely felt it. He felt it in North Hollywood. Hmm. I mean, that's quite a ways. That's quite a ways from uh, from the that Ladera Heights area, the Windsor Hills. So this is a picture of the trailer park. Over in, I don't think this was in Trona. This is like in Ridgecrest, right? Ridgecrest. Yeah. So you could see that this, this, uh, what? The trailer actually fell off. You see all this kind of crushed uh, siding? The trailer actually moved over. I think it was like 18 inches. There's one of these pictures that I took. Uh, I actually put my tape measure on it. And um, some of these had earthquake piers on it. Obviously, this one didn't. We ended up uh, meeting up with a company that gets these trailers back up because they're all sitting on a chassis. And you know, see, I, I was measuring the displacement once it kind of collapsed over. Yeah, see, in this case, it moved like 19 inches. In a building, by the way, if your building moves over 19 inches, it's going in the garbage can. It's, I mean, it's, it's done. Uh, these, remember, trailers are sitting on their own steel frame. So what happened is they fell off the support pier. So, you know, you can uh, jack them back up and, and bring them back up and then, you know, repair whatever siding damage you had. But in an in a actual structure, it's over. Something like that could, uh, a movement like that would be catastrophic. Now, this leads me to my next point. A lot of the damage that we saw down there was, was fire. Uh, this was caused by an uh, elderly couple, I think, lived there. They were cooking. And um, this is what the neighbor told me. This I was talking to, to the neighbor behind them. And anyway, they, they left the place, they left the, um, the stove on, the pan that had a, like a plastic handle, it melted, it fell on a, like a little carpet thing, a little rug that was in front of the stove, 
that caught fire. The whole place was on fire. So it was, there was no earthquake damage to this trailer. The damage was 100% fire-based. So there's some things you can do that are very inexpensive that can prevent a fire. And uh, we'll, we're definitely going to talk about that. Another angle. This is pretty much a total loss. You can see this building didn't fall off its piers. It's a double wide. And uh, it looked like I was actually a pretty spacious house. It was complete total mess. I mean, everything's just, it's just toxic. It's, it's going to get crushed and thrown out. Most of these that fell, that kind of slipped from under the, the foundation, the piers, they can be uh, jacked up and reset. It's not a problem. Look at this. So this illustrates how when it when it falls off its foundation, how much of a of a gap it is, and look how the doors is underneath the the deck that they built for it. This was a concrete block wall. You can see that they didn't have any rebar. Not not very good quality. Um, it wasn't built very well. The the this probably looks to me it looks like this was the original height and then somebody came in and added another three rows of blocks uh, and it didn't tie it together because you could see that this section stayed in pretty good shape so I think this was done originally and then they added some some additional uh, layers to it and they didn't do such a good job but I mean that's totally me speculating it's it's hard to say um, everything was was loose that earthquake just just toppled the whole thing now this was really interesting to me because this is a soft story building this is the the type of building that we retrofit and I am still kind of amazed that there wasn't much more damage to this these connection points the entire stucco up here on the second floor is completely spider cracked so one of, in the city of LA, they, they give a structural, and well, in the city of LA, they give you credit for structural lateral, lateral resistance to stucco for the purposes of keeping your construction costs down. You don't have to take out all the stucco and put plywood like you do now. All new buildings, if this building was being rebuilt, this would all be um, structural one plywood, okay? But very likely this was built could be built in the 80s but it's, most of these buildings were probably built before the 70s and they basically just have a stucco like a chicken wire like stucco lath and and they have stucco you know installed right on top of that so what ends up happening though is they spider crack i mean they really 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 crack i can't zoom this in i think there's a picture maybe a little bit closer so this is like this is the the existing four by four post and it's bent. You can see that it has so much weight on it that it's it's about to snap. I don't know. It's crazy. Um, this is over in Trona. This was an entire subdivision where probably ninety percent of the houses had some type of damage. This and this particular house was red tagged, and um, you could see the stucco separating here, and that the house basically displaced. This is a kind of a close-up shot of the same wall. So let me show you what, let me kind of explain to you what you're looking at here. From the crack up, it's the wood frame construction. From the crack down, it is the concrete stem wall, okay? And what happened is that the mud sill, this, this uh, horizontal uh, piece of two by four, Two by sixes in some spots, but this is two by four. It, it is not bolted down correctly. So when the ground moves, the gravity, the house wants to stay in place due to gravity. And then ultimately what ends up happening is the ground, the, the foundation separates from the structure. And you get this cracking. And the the kind of the really interesting part is that where it, wherever the building, once it separates the structure from the foundation it keeps moving until the earthquake stops and wherever it stops that's how much displacement you'll have so somehow you got to get the house back on the foundation if it's severe but if you look at this part of the house this is the side of the house you can see here that sections of the house actually blew out like like inch and a half two inches it's more severe as you get to the the back side of the house so I would 
I would safely t- tell you that the if the people were home during the earthquake, they must have felt it rocking and rolling in there. Now, you know, at first, this looks kind of really bad because this big old piece of, of stucco flew out, but it, it isn't part of the stem wall. This was just stucco that was on, on the outside, so it's not so bad here. But you can see this cracking is along is on is horizontal along the entire structure. It's crazy. All right, so this is actually a famous restaurant, maybe more famous town than before the earthquake because all of the camera, the cameras uh, capture this. And what you're looking at here is a CMU wall, a concrete block wall, and it is the victim. This building is the victim of the phenomenon called lateral spread. Lateral spread. It is not a sandwich condiment. Lateral spread is actually when the the it's a section of, of the ground that actually slides away from each other. So think of like a big plate. And with the shaking, um, it actually slides from each other. So this part of the building stayed where it was. And then this part of the building slid. All, at least the ground did. The ground, you know, it's attached to the ground, obviously. And it slid that way. Now... The, the the really kind of fascinating part is if you look at the roof, the roof was basically torn apart as part of the building wanted to slide to the left. This was uh, right outside of the place. So from, from, my, from this part of my hand, that's part of the ground that slid that way. This stayed in place and this just slid away from it. And it, it doesn't matter how thick the concrete is, it'll break everything. Nothing can withstand the, the force of, of lateral spread. Um, if, if unfortunately, if, if the building, if the entire building was on here, then it would just move over, you know, that inch and a half together. No problem. The problem is that when half of the building stays fixed and the other part is on the section of the, of the ground that's moving, it literally would just spread apart from each other. And uh, in this case, you know, it, it's, it's, I find it kind of fascinating, but in this case, it literally just separated. It didn't separate and displace. Like it didn't, it didn't separate, separate and then move this way. It just, it just separated. So I'm going to share with you this really cool footage that Brian took when we were there. This is our drone footage. So he's got a. He's got, um, um, this captures like how it goes over the building and, and tears in. So you could see the damage, right, of that section of the building where, where it literally slipped, slipped away from each other. It damaged the whole, the whole way through. <laughs> damaged that part, damaged this part. There isn't very much, guys, that you can do uh, for lateral spread. It's... It's kind of a catastrophic situation. The shaking, you can minimize it by um, by bolting down the house. All right, so after we went to the city and we saw the buildings, we wanted to see some of the, the cracks and the fissures and all the other movement that what, you know that was on the news. So we went out on a little, on a little field trip. And uh, here you can see how sections of the ground actually uplifted and then there's other sections that collapsed so it was it's just a trip like look at the displacement that's that's almost a foot and a half here's my truck and then this kind of captures so you can kind of get a little bit of gauge a little bit of height and stuff like i i couldn't run my truck off of that step that step is about 18 inches i'd, I'd get stuck there and this, this we saw quite a bit of, this these kind of fissures, these types of, of surface ruptures. Now, here the other part that was very interesting is the way that the ground breaks. You see all those little kind of intricate cracks? It looks almost like when you break glass, that it, it, um, it cracks and shatters uh, irregularly. The stucco did that. So you could see that the even though this is on a horizontal plane, the, the horizontal, the way that the... the that the this kind of this crust on the surface of the desert, that cracking was the same pattern that we saw on the stucco 
on, on the walls. So it's just, it was, it's, it's a trip to see that. So let's talk a little bit about what we can do. Um, but before we do that, we're going to take a little quick break. I'm going to show you um, some of our heroes here in the South Bay. And we've got a cool little message. So check that out. We'll be, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. And um, we'll continue with what to do to protect your house. How many of you are concerned with COVID-19? We are too. The Manhattan Beach Police Department and the Manhattan Beach Fire Department are trained in all types of emergencies to keep you and your family safe. Although we may not have all the answers during these uncertain times, it's important that you stay home and practice social distancing. We're working hard day in and day out to protect you. We are here for you, so please stay home for us. what to do what to do so let's talk about what you can do to protect your house and protect yourself some of this stuff is going to be things that you've heard of before and then maybe a few things uh, a little bit new by the way i'm going to give away to the coolest comment posted we've got our new hats we've got the new bay cities construction softer retrofit pros hat we've got uh nice new clean ones don't worry i'm not going to give you this one but um i I'd like to see if if you like to see what some some comments you know it's the show's a lot more fun when you guys post some comments so we we'd sure. love to to share that L love to read off your comments and um, and if you can please share that's that's awesome all right so let's talk about what to do prepare so the uh, the top picture here is an illustration of a house bolt down that we did we did this for um, a great customer of ours his name is Art and uh, and his wife in Torrance. We put down these URFP plates. We also uh, put in some blocking and um, and these kind of secondary angles. So the idea is that we tied, this is the, the stem wall, right? Like in, in the pictures that I showed you in Trona. This is the stem wall. This is the top plate. And the cracking occurs at this junction box here, at this kind of junction point. So then what we do is we keep the mud sill tied to the foundation. And then we use these angles and we connect them to the blocking. And then obviously the blocking is connected to the floor system. So a, a, we normally put them every four or five, every, every five feet or so. In some cases we put every four feet. And this is the foundation, the foundation. This is really the beginning of how we bolt down the house. So the idea is that, you know, the, the, existing, the, the existing way that the originators, the builders of the house um, bolted this down is not enough. Well, many of them, they have a bolt like every 10 feet or something like that. They're really depending on gravity to keep the connection intact. But during an earthquake, the earthquake forces are left to right and front and back. So it's going to cause this oscillation movement, right? And that's that causes the damage that I showed you um, in the previous pictures. Uh, another important part is strapping down the water heater. It's really important. Preferably, you should get the water heater outside. And if at all possible, if, if you can budget this, a tankless water heater that's tiny and doesn't hold any water um, like that is, is probably the best. And, and that should be all done outside. And now, to prevent your fire, you install this little, little firefighter guy right here. And what this is, is an earthquake shutoff valve. What that's going to do is it's got a little ball bearing in there. When when the house shakes, it's going to trigger the, the little device and it's going to cut the gas off. You don't need any tools to reset it. You don't need to do anything. You don't have to call the gas company. You simply um, uh, turn the little valve there and it, it resets itself. It's super easy. Uh, to do and it literally that's probably the most important part of, um, of retrofitting your house um, you don't want to just you do the bolt down and not do that or do this and not do the bolt down but if you want to get started you don't have the money to do the bolt down you know get started with this any plumber can install it for you I'm not selling it you can you can order in fact you can order it on Amazon and then call your local plumber and they'll install it for you I think you'll be out of pocket a total of like 350 bucks or something like that you can do it yourself if you're a, a brave DIYer. This this other job was really interesting because this the floor system in this house was uh, t a tongue and groove like 
the two by sixes. So we had to do something a little bit different because they don't, they don't, it's not the same. So what we did is we bolted down uh, a ledger board and then we put in these, uh, these angles and then we put in the strap. And the idea behind this is that all of the, the wood, the subfloor wood stays intact. It can't separate. See, the, these are the seams, these little seams here. It's a T and G system. So the, the strap nailing, it's the entire length of the house. So it keeps the floor diaphragm system together. And then we tie the floor diaphragm to the ledger board and the ledger board into the masonry. And that that's attached by these big, um, heavy Simpson uh, bolts that are concrete bolts. And then there's obviously the URFP plates. So the so we're transferring all of the, the load back down into the foundation so that it stays it can't separate from itself. That's just kind of we and we have some other videos. If you want to learn more about the bolting, we have some videos that that uh, we'll put in the link below, and you can you can take a look at that at your leisure. All right. So this part here is important. We don't sell groceries, obviously, right? But this is. I think most of you can appreciate the fact that you're going to need more than like a week or two worth of food. The one of the recent, you know crazy panics that that ensued after the coronavirus broke out uh, you had you saw how people empty out the grocery store if you do not want to wait in line if you do not want to be part of the madness of trying to find toilet paper and uh, canned goods during the or shortly thereafter the earthquake you know stock up on it stock up on it and don't have like two weeks worth of have a few months worth of it and some of these things you can have for like a year and you can rotate in and out of it so, you know, you should have, you should be prepared and you should put it in a place that it's not going to get damaged. Okay. So think about that. Think about how you're storing it. Think about um, if it's going to realize that we live in Southern California, we're exposed to, to earthquakes. Uh, we're exposed to, if you live over here in the South Bay where I live, you could be exposed to uh, tsunamis. So maybe you want to have, you know, if you're, if you're in the tsunami zone, it, it may, may be a good idea to stash some of your food, not at your house, but at a relative's house or something like that. Like you, you kind of have to start thinking about like an emergency plan. OK, um, if you look at the USGS maps, you can see how exposed you are to tsunamis. You can also look at the USGS maps and see how close you are to earthquake faults. So anyway, the idea here is have a plan. Think about this stuff. Think about having some water. Think about having a, a few months worth of food. Also, you know, during a big panic or a big uh, food rush, uh, you may not be able to find food. You know, like, do you want to spend your day going from store to store to store hoping that somebody has something? Like, in all honesty, just recently at the John's by my house over on 190th, they just started having rice and pasta. They, 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 up until about a week and a half ago, they were rationing out, you know, one box of rice and one box of, of pasta per person. So, look, you don't want to buy an umbrella when it's raining. You want to buy an umbrella on a sunny day, okay? When nobody wants to buy an umbrella, that's when you want to buy an umbrella. Same thing with the food. You want to have the food before you have the emergency. That way, you only have the emergency and you don't have the emergency and then having a lack of food emergency. That's, that's two emergencies. Okay, so think about that. Uh, it is probably a pretty wise thing to do. We have an episode where we show the maps and all that stuff, so we'll make sure to include it. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So Brian just uh, just told me, for those of you that can't, he's out of uh, maybe out of mic range. Uh, we did an episode about that, and he's going to include the link uh, in our description below. So, hey, look, have some uh, common sense stuff here, okay? You need some lights. You may need some ropes. You may need a little bit of, uh, you know, obviously you need some toilet paper. Get, get some supplies. Get some things going. FEMA actually has a really cool checklist. Uh, throw me that little FEMA book over here so I can just put it in front of the camera. This is actually really cool. Uh, you know, you pay millions of dollars in taxes every year, and uh, this is what you get for it, okay? You're going to get your little FEMA book right here. This little FEMA book is actually pretty good. I mean... You know, I'm kind of cracking a little wise on them, but but they have some 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 kind of heat maps of like the disaster areas, particularly for earthquakes. Uh, they have some kind of cool <coughs> like some some info that you should have, the name of your school and contact info, stuff like that. 
they actually have a, a little section here on how to purify water. You know, I won't go into a terrible little detail about it, but they, they can go out, they can get this, what, through online? They can order one of these things? We have it a, a download on our website. Oh, well, yeah, that's right, that's right. So we actually have this on a PDF download that you can download, and we'll, we'll, we'll pour, post, post a link below for that. Um, one thing I do want to tell you, this is a kind of a construction-related deal. After the earthquake, if you have to leave your house, you're leaving in an emergency and you're figuring, hey, look, for whatever reason, you're going to go to a, another relative's house. Go turn off all of the power. Go to the main breaker, shut your power down, and go to your earthquake valve and hit the little button. You can actually cut the gas. Okay? Do those two things and then shut off the water to the building. Those three things. Shut the power off, shut the gas off, shut the water off. That way, if there's another earthquake while you're gone and a pipe breaks, you're not going to... You may have no damage due to the earthquake, but it may cause a pipe to break and it'll flood your house and then the water will run until you get back. Okay, so it's a very wise thing to do. If you're going to go on vacation also, just just shut her, shut her down. Part of your, your shutdown mode is you turn the water, the power, and the gas off. That way, if anything happens... Um, you're you're not going to get a secondary. You're not going to get any secondary damage by one of uh, one of those things going off. Okay, uh, it could be also that while you're gone, you could have a short. It could cause a fire, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Not a good thing. The next thing I think it is is really important that you have. Oh, there's your download by the way for the FEMA. Uh, sorry, before I go to that, the other thing you should have is you should have fire spring. Uh, um, Fire extinguishers. I've got two. I bought them on Amazon. Look, it was expensive. I think it was like 150 bucks, 200 bucks. But a big one, like the one that they have at a school. You need a good, a good size fire extinguisher. If you if you get a car fire, if you have um, an electrical fire, you need more than the little one shot, you know, squeeze that you get out of those little tiny cans. Those little tiny cans. It's maybe it's good for your car or something like that, but not for your house. You need to have an ABC. Um, fire extinguisher. I've got two. I've got one in the front of the, my house, and I don't have it locked up or anything. So I guess if you figure out where I live, you could steal my fire, my two hundred dollar fire extinguisher. But please don't. Um, but th the point is that you want anybody to be able to just grab the fire extinguisher and turn the fire off. You know, if, if you have a neighbor that uh, you actually get along with, and they see that there's a fire starting at your place, maybe they'll be kind enough to run over to the front of your house, take the fire extinguisher off. And uh, shoot your, you know, shoot some, some fire extinguisher uh, dust on on your fire, and you know, do you a solid, and you're indebted to them forever. So anyway, have that in place. Make it easy. If you have the fire extinguisher and you teach your kids how to use it, um, it's very likely that if you know, God forbid, they're in a position that that uh, a fire starts, they can turn it off. So, you know, think about those things. You know, I, I got to tell you just a quick story. You know, when I was a kid, my parents didn't have a fire extinguisher. I don't know, for those of you who know, my parents are both from Cuba. And uh, they're old school, right? So um, so I had a grease fire at the house. You know, I was, I was a, a teenager. It was a grease fire. And um, I had just learned that you can put, um, I think it was baking soda. You can turn a fire off with yeah. baking soda. Well, I didn't have baking soda. So what I did is I, I, I threw on the grease fire... Uh, uh, probably about a whole box of spick and span, spick and span, the the but in powder form, right? And it turned the damn fire off. It worked, right? It the house smelled like burnt spick and span for for about three about three or four weeks, but it didn't burn down. So look, have a fire extinguisher. Have a few of them. Have a little one in the in the kitchen, and then have these bigger ones outside in the public. The more prepared you are, the 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 better the better uh, you'll be able to handle an uh, unforeseen situation. All right. So get your download. You got your uh, your FEMA download uh, down here. We got the, the link for you. And uh, it's, on, it's on our little checklist thing, too. If you go to Soft Retrofit Pros forward slash checklist, um, those are some of the safety, earthquake safety checklists that you may find of some importance. Now, if you really want to geek out and you really want to learn more about earthquakes, uh, you can listen to the 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 big one podcast from um, I think it's this is uh, public radio. Really, really interesting guys. Uh, they talk about surviving earthquakes and um, I think the the kind of the common 
the common saying in, in, in that in that kind of world, the, the kind of the earthquake preppers, is that surviving the earthquake is easy, surviving the aftermath is hard, which is why I'm telling you to make sure that you have a few months worth of food so that you you're not you don't spend all of your time after the earthquake or after the disaster looking for food. That's just one problem that you're not gonna have to deal with because um, there'll be many other problems for you to have. So think about that, that you, it'll be easy for you to survive the earthquake, but the aftermath, the aftermath is the hard part. This is the famous and very camera photogenic mayor of Los Angeles holding up the, uh, the Shake Alert app. It's actually a pretty cool, cool app. Uh, it has a little early warning system. You may know that an earthquake is coming about four seconds before the earthquake happens, but uh, hey, it's getting better and better every time. And um, it's it's kind of something interesting to, to take a look at. So so you can download that app on your phone, and you'll know about an earthquake before it happens. Hey, so let's talk a little bit about. Let's take some questions. Uh, Brian, do we have any questions from the folks? Yeah. So just uh, right off the bat, we want to say it looks like we have some technical difficulties. Our live stream was interrupted, but obviously we're going to go ahead and post this up after the fact, so everybody okay can, can see the entire show and the questions. So yeah, one of the viewers actually did, we had some questions and one somebody wanted to know, can I actually retrofit a home that has a slab foundation? No, you don't need to re retrofit a house that has a slab foundation. This only applies for, the retrofitting is, is only for um, houses that have a raised foundation and a cripple wall. Well, a cripple wall is a raised foundation by definition, but you gotta have a raised foundation for, for retrofit. Okay. Uh, another question is, uh, somebody asked, my home was built in the 1990s. Am I okay? Am I out of the woods? Probably. Now, what I, what I do want to, for you to, to take a moment and inspect the house. So walk around and look at the corners. If on the corners you have uh, cracks that are horizontal to the ground, um, could be a little movement issue. Could be something that you may want to have checked out. By the way, you can take a picture of it and email it to us. So if you find anything weird around your house, whether it's earthquake related or any other construction related stuff, take a picture of it and you can email it to us. Send it to me at alex at baycitiesconstruction.com. Alex at baycitiesconstruction.com. Or Brian. Or Brian, yeah. Brian, uh, Brian at baycitiesconstruction.com. Another question uh, similar is, why aren't retrofits for homes required like they are for soft stories? <laughs> So, because it's not a very politically pleasant thing to require. Look, I mean, some people don't think that it's a big deal that, that their house is not bolted down to the foundation. So the city doesn't require it. I would say that most people don't even know that, that they live on a raised foundation house and it should be bolted down. So it's not a city requirement. If for, for those of us that live down here in the South Bay in Redondo, Hermosa, Manhattan, um, and you have a tall and skinny, most people don't even know that that's a poorly built house. Most people don't know that that's, that, how, that type of, of architecture can suffer a tremendous amount of damage. Yeah, if you guys um, want, we can, well, actually I'll tell, uh, Brian can post a picture of the, we have some videos for bolt down for tall and skinnies and you can see the earthquake, um, the Japanese did an earthquake t test and you can actually see how those tall and skinnies perform. It's not a good, performance, uh, you know, especially if you don't do any, any retrofitting to them. So most people don't know. It's not required by law. It's up to you to uh, be take prudent measures to protect yourself. Uh, one of our viewers wants to know, how can they protect their manufactured home? So there's, there's actually some special peers that have a, a connection that doesn't come loose from the frame. Um, they're, I think they're called like earthquake jacks, earthquake piers. They're not even that expensive. So if you haven't had that switched out, um, I think there's a company that retrofits. If you look up retrofitting uh, double wide trailers, you'll find a few vendors that do that. There's a couple guys that specialize in that. Because uh, I met them over there in uh, Ridgecrest when we, were, when we were checking that out. The insurance company had sent them over to get, to get the, uh, the surviving trailers up, up and running again. Uh, one of our other viewers would like to know, do you need plans for a retrofit? You do need plans for retrofit. So even though it's voluntary, the city of LA, well, they made it easy. The city of LA uh, put together a, 
uh, kind of a series of approved methodologies for bolting down the house. Uh, we're an approved vendor with um, California Earthquake Authority, and most of the cities will adopt the allowable methods by set forth by the city of LA, even though they're not in the city of LA. Now, if you have a cripple wall that and if you have a cripple wall that's bigger than two feet, you need you need engineering plans stamped by an engineer. If um, the building also has a certain size or is on a hillside, you will need engineering plans drawn up by an engineer. We just so happen to have one for you. So those are those are conditions. Those are kind of the two scenarios that you'll be faced with. If you're on a hillside and you have a cripple wall that is bigger than two feet, or or if you're a second story and you have a a cripple wall that's bigger than two feet. Truth is, if your building is is you know bigger than say fifteen hundred square feet, it's not a bad idea to have an engineer look at it. I always have uh, our engineers take a look at the plans, even the ones that, that are, don't require engineering, just to have a a fresh set of eyes take a look and make sure we didn't miss anything. Another one of our viewers would like to know how long does something like this take? Most bolt downs will take about a week, three to five days. If you if you have cripple walls and it's a little bit more elaborate, you know it could be two months, two weeks, not two months, two weeks. If you're doing like a full soft store retrofit, that could be a couple months. But uh, most houses we get done in about two, two, two or three days, something like that. A lot of it depends on how much access there is under the house. Some houses are really tight and it's it's a little rough, a little rough getting in there. Somebody asks, uh, uh, in the event of an earthquake, will FEMA or the government help them out? Three <sighs> weeks later, probably. Maybe. Look, if you want to depend on the government to keep your family in your house, um, I think the best thing to do is take a snapshot of what happened to the Katrina folk. What happened to the folks that depended on the government, you know, over in, uh, by the Jersey Shore after that hurricane. Like... Guys, it's just so much better for you to take um, some preventive measures. I bolted down my house um, just recently. You know, I, I was it, we had a little bit of a downtime, and and I was able to do it. Like I think it was March, February, February. I think we did we did my place, and uh, I'm I think it's just a no brainer. And by the way, I rent there. I rent at my house, and I paid for the whole thing. My landlord didn't want to cover the expense, but you know, I had my friends asking me like, "Dude, why did you do that?" And one says, "Well." If I can't run my business, if my house where I live is in uh, in disarray, and can you imagine finding a house and trying to move when other people's, when dozens or, or maybe even hundreds of other families are displaced because they didn't have their house bolted down? Like that's a nightmare. You're not gonna find housing, um, and you're not gonna find housing for cheap. So, you know, this is a, a relatively inexpensive way for you to, to add a layer of security for you and your family. So I would do it. I would, I, I, it's, it's going to be way cheaper to bolt down the house than to call somebody like me out and try and fix your house after the, the earthquake damaged it. I also did, did uh, my parents' place this year. They have a two-story house with a cripple wall, and we'll have some pictures in that. We'll, we'll post it uh, probably in another video of just that um, earthquake. I think we did. We did do a video on that. Did we do a video on the cripple we've shared, wall? We've shared videos of the project on our... Yeah, but we haven't done a, a slide on that one. So, look, we're going to do one on just that, on on, on uh, earthquake uh, bolting down a, a cripple wall structure. Because that house was amazing. My parents didn't want to do it. They're like, oh, we're not, we don't need that. The government will provide uh, assistance once it happens, blah, blah. It turns out that that house, their house, had been earthquake damage. All four walls have horizontal cracks along the entire length of each wall. Um, and by the way, uh, it turns out that they're near, uh, um, they're considered a, a seismically at risk area because of the proximity to the earthquake fault that runs um, under Santa Monica Boulevard. Santa Monica, they live in Koreatown. So there's an earthquake fault that runs under big sections of Santa Monica Boulevard in, in like Los Feliz. Most people don't know that. Most people, I didn't know that. I mean, they, they've lived there for 20 years. So, you know, you, we, we live in a, in a, in a place. We live, L.A., for the most part, should not have been built where it's built. 
based on all of the hazards that we have. We have flood hazards. We have, by the way, my parents are in a flood zone, which is crazy. Um, and then they're, and they're in their earthquake zone. So there you go. Great news. <laughs> Great news for them. Do we have any other questions? Yeah, one last question. One of our viewers wants to know, do we have somebody that we recommend for the, for the gas valve? Uh, yeah, who did we use um, for that? What's the name? Yeah, of? there's a company, SGS, Safety Gas Services, out of oh, yeah. Santa Monica. Okay. We've recommended a lot of our customers. Yeah, yeah they're real happy with them. They, they, um, Nothing you know, but good things to say. Yeah, everybody's been totally stoked with them. They do a nice, clean job. We don't get a commission or anything like that. They're just, um, they're a good partner uh, to refer business to. And um, if, uh, we'll put a post to their deal. So, hey, if we don't have any other questions, we can wrap this bad boy up. All right, guys. Hey, thanks very much for uh, for watching our videos, and please share your videos. And by the way, if you um, if you put a nice, cool comment and you share, um, I'm gonna have a nice kind of cool cap, super comfortable cap, kind of stylish, has nice colors. If you want to learn more about uh, residential construction, please go to BayCitiesConstruction.com. If you want to learn more about earthquake stuff, you can also go to Soft Store Retrofit Pros. That's where our, more of our seismic stuff is is on there. But if, if you're thinking about doing a kitchen or bathroom remodel, uh, we can definitely do that for you. If you need if you need plans for a new home addition, we can do that for you. Just go to BayCitiesConstruction.com and fill out the little form, and uh, Brian or I will give you a call right away. Um, that's a picture of me over in PV. Uh, we're doing a kitchen bathroom job over there right now, and we are open for business. We are Corona free, and uh, we're taking. Um, Taking precautions, washing your hands. I got a new set of little masks with these little inserts, you know. They're a lot more comfortable than those other ones. So we're open for business. Um, we can definitely help you out with uh, helping you design the deal, coming up with uh, architectural plans, engineering. We'll represent you with the city. We'll manage the project. Um, and actually, we're going to do a, a con another construction show. I want you guys to meet uh, Casey, our project manager, and Wendy, our... Uh, our interior designer, both really talented, super, super nice people, good people to work with. And um, we're definitely gonna put the videos to introduce them to, to you guys, to our audience. So please be on the lookout for the next episode. We go live every week. We try and at least do it every week. Um, it's a little crazy right now with all the stuff we're dealing with with the corona. But uh, it is a fun show and it's a lot more fun when you're involved. So please post your comments, even if you're watching the show on a replay. Uh, Brian's all, Brian and I are on there all the time when we're looking to, to answer your questions because uh, that's what makes it fun. If you want to call offices directly, um, the number's on here. If you want to look at some reviews and what other people are saying about us, by all means, um, go, you know, go to one of these sites here. There's plenty of, uh, of things that people have posted about us over the years. So I want to thank you very much for watching the show. I want to thank you for, for interacting. My name is Alex with Bay Cities Construction Mining. You, you don't need a contract, but you do need a team of pros. Corona free. I love Los Angeles. Movie stars, surfing, one of the most diverse cities in America. Some days it feels like paradise, but any second now that could all change because the big one is coming. We're better prepared for the big one than any big city in America, which is to say we're woefully unprepared. An earthquake so large that the Los Angeles you know will be gone. It's going to be chaos. Thousands of fires will break out all over the city. The power will go out. Clean water will be scarce. They don't understand that it's not going to be just one big shake, but it's going to be thousands of shakes for months or years. There's nothing we can do to stop it, but we can get ready. So you stayed, you stayed after the, the show was over. And like always, I have an offer. Every time we do the show, I always have a hidden offer that's only good for the folks that watch the entire show. So here's the deal. Today's episode, we're talking about um, earthquake retrofitting. I don't know how much your project is gonna cost, but I know that I can give you $200 towards your plan check fees, okay? Different cities uh, charge different fees. Um, but I know that I can, I can control this. I can control that I will offset your city fees 
by two hundred dollars. So if you if you call us, you go on our website and fill in this fill in uh, your information. Brian or I will will give you a call. You can also text me some pictures of your foundation. You can send them to three two three six seven nine three zero five six. And um, let's get started with a conversation. Uh, we're ready to do business with you, and uh, maybe a little stimulus, a little local stimulus, will help you um, get started on protecting your house. My name is Alex, Bay Cities Construction, reminding you, you don't need a contractor, you need a team of pros. See ya. Do you know that an, a big earthquake can produce a wave that's two feet tall? Hi folks, I'm Alex Rodriguez, and I want to protect your house for $1.99 a month. I'm the owner of Bay Cities Construction, and after visiting Ridgecrest, it's clear to me that you can prevent a tremendous amount of expensive damage by having a seismic retrofit done to your race foundation. Have you ever wondered if your house needs to be bolted down? And have you ever wondered what could happen to your house if it's not braced and bolted down? Let's check this out. Let's get down and dirty. So this is how we do a bolt down. We bolt down the mud sill to the stem, then we connect the floor joist to the mud sill, and then ideally you connect the subfloor to the floor joist. That's the system to keep this connection intact while the floor is violently shaking. Our low cost financing makes this project affordable. The process is easy, it only takes one day. We live in earthquake country. Dr. Lucy Jones reminds us that earthquakes are random. We can't predict earthquakes, but we can prepare. Remember, it only takes $1.99 a month to protect your most valued investment. Get peace of mind with a Bay Cities Construction Seismic Retrofit. Protect your largest investment. Go to baycitiesconstruction.com and sign up today. My question to you is, can you over-engineer a house for an earthquake? Look at that, you tell me. The big question is, did we do enough? I'm Alex Rodriguez reminding you, you don't need a contractor, you need a team of pros. My name is Alex Rodriguez reminding you, you don't need a contract, you need a team of pros.